fiction, science fiction, horror, fantasy, crime, LGBT, thriller. You have now entered the house of mystery with your hosts, Eric Shapiro, David North Martino. John Copenhaver and Al Warren. Heard on KCB 106.5 FM Los Angeles. 102.3 FM Riverside. And 105.0 AM Palm Springs. Welcome back. And joining us now, Kevin Estrella. Uh, thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having me on. Glad to be back. Yeah, I know. I enjoy talking to you. Um, so, uh, how have you been lately? Uh, how's everything been going for you um, since the last time we talked? Well, I've been working a, a lot of stuff with uh, with Pyramids on Mars. Um, you know, we just released uh, released my first uh, or second CD uh, September eighth, and we spent uh, about three or four months uh, with a massive marketing campaign. And I was probably doing two to three radio interviews a week for three months straight and uh, doing tons and tons of magazine interviews and getting reviews done so it's been really busy we've been uh, it's been awesome though i mean uh, you know my my cd echo cosmic is a lot of people are comparing it to you know as good as satriani's surfing with the alien when it first came out back in 1985 so it's turning a lot of heads and i you know i'm on the verge of breaking 40,000 twitter followers uh, at the end of this month so you know, things are really going well, I would say. I'm very excited. And then on, on you know, on, in regards to everything else with, uh, with uh, you know, my UFO experiences, um, there's been, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of developments that are, that are happening and um, me slowly being able to piece the pieces, put the pieces together to understand exactly what is going on with me and why I've been contacted directly, and 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 um, and the you know the people that I've been put in contact with, because now that I am um, you know um, an experiencer, um, it's opened up so many doors. I've been let basically let in to the you know, these you know these special groups, uh, and we you know, with other experiencers and talking with a lot of people and getting a lot of exposure to a lot of things that you know average people aren't getting a hold of. Um, you know these these special groups, and I've learned so much, and it's just unbelievable. You know the experiences that these other people have had. Hmm. Do you find that there's um uh, maybe a uh, oh I don't know what how to call it, but um, some sort of I don't know regulation on what people find out about uh, experiencers and UFOs? Like you say, these groups you get. Um, a lot of information and stuff. Yeah, uh, with some of these groups like Starseed Awakenings with Misha Johnson, um, she uh, sends invitations out to have group meetings, and they're done through Google, you know, group Google meeting sites. But they're only you know, for experiencers. They're you know, she doesn't let anybody else into these groups or or researchers because uh, of confidentiality. You know, with people to be able to talk about their experiences and what's happening with them, and um, you know, I've had a chance to talk with many different people, and it's 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 just because it, the the rabbit hole goes down rabbit hole goes down so deep, um, and some of these people are only talking about certain things, you know, um, and they, they you know they don't want to go on the radio because of um, you know, they don't feel that it's appropriate material to be, you know, giving out publicly, so to speak, or, or that it's not the right timing. They feel that, you know, the, the timing must be right you know, to release information. Hmm. But um, the more I've talked with different people and hearing from other people, I'm able to see where the cross-referencing is in regards to the larger agenda of what's, of what's happening, and it's, it's quite fascinating, actually. Uh, so, so why? What, so you're 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 saying there's quite a bit of backlash or something like when you go out public. Um, have you noticed that for yourself? Have you had some um, more negative response to being, let's say, out about having experience? 
Um, on the, when I'm on the radio, no. Uh, it's been great because it's been, you know, within groups of, you know, like, uh, you know, New UFO, you know, UFO radio shows, so you know everybody's, you know, it's, it's friendly. I find more it's in my in my public life where um, some people kind of don't know what to take of my stories. Um, my kids believe everything that I, you know that I tell them, and they're 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 very excited. Uh, my wife, not so much. She doesn't really know what to make of things. I mean, she believes that I had a sighting, but as far as you know, me being the only one who saw it and that they're in contact directly with me and, and everything, you know, that I tell her about, you know, the things that, you know, other people told me she has a hard time believing. It's just because it's too... When I talk to people about these things, it sounds like science fiction, but it's not. You know, these things have been told to me in confidentiality. Right. Uh, so, and that's what I mean by I can understand why it's still going to probably take another 10 to 15 maybe longer years until disclosure finally happens because, um, and I'm starting to understand, you know, why Grant Cameron says, and when I've asked him this question, why, why don't they just land on the White House? You know, why is it taking such a long time? Why are they, you know, just flying around, you know, in saucers and, and people seeing them? Because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's spoon feeding the human race, um, a, you know, a four course meal to a baby and you have to do it very, very slowly. Because everybody's at, at different levels, you know. A lot of people don't believe at all, you know, and it's just not part of their their um, uh, paradigm shift, you know, the, the, of their of the reality. Others are much more far ahead and are already awakened. Others are not quite certain. Um, so everybody's at a different level. But they, um, you know, there's more and more sightings that are happening, and and you know, they're trying to get things going faster. Um, to get people, you know, to be able to, to, you know, to be able to say, okay, we can't ignore this anymore. What's going on? Right. Well, what do you think their intention is then? Do you, do you, do you kind of understand what what their intention is overall? Is it why they're they're spoon feeding, as you would say, as they're slowly developing the human race to understand them? Is there an overall big picture for them, or the, like why do they care? I guess would be why I would say. Uh, I mean, it's a big one. So I mean, it's I, a big, it's I, a big asked, question. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean. So, are you kind of? Um, uh, do you because understand it yourself? I mean, you kind of. I'm starting to understand it more. Um, the more information I get, the the more I kind of understand. But then it kind of like oh, at the same point, I kind of feel like you're just still trying to understand it because it's really hard to grasp. Right. I mean, they want. Um, they want people to, to to you know to to know and understand and get there, um, but they are doing it in a very you know slow fashion. Um, I had a chance to uh, um, watch a, a presentation uh, or a, a talk with uh, her name's Susan Hansen, and she's from uh, um, um, oh what's that country above Australia, New Zealand, New Zealand. Okay. and she just released a, a book called The Dual Soul, The Alien Agenda for Human Advancement. And I watched a three-hour uh, video of her talking, and I learned a lot about, <laughs> you know, the different uh, alien agendas, because she's been working with the Greys all her life. And, um, you know, she's been on board the craft many times, and, um, and the, you know, the, the Greys are working with, with humans, a lot of humans, like the, she says millions and they um, are taking them and, um, you know, into the shifts and working with many, many groups. And, um, you know, she's describing, you know, um, you, know, um, you know, downloads that people will be given vast amounts of technical information and then they're asked to rearrange the information. And this is all done through telepathy and talking, you know, telepathically and rearranging information and, um, and um, you know, um, and coordinates and, and working with, um, you know, traveling, you know, traveling through different planet systems and how to do it using the, you know, gravitational or the whatever fields. Um, and they're teaching humans how to do different things and, and how to, you know, diff different languages and stuff. Uh, so there's a, there is a large agenda going on, um, you know, um, you know, and. Well, you think, well, I think, I think, um, Maybe um, are they trying? 
well, let's just say, uh, is it a friendly intent? Do you think like th- th- this isn't a? It's very friendly. It's yeah. it's it's um you know it, as she, as she put it you know it's a very loving environment like uh, you know um you know not only like, like the way she describes telepathy you know telepathic communication it's 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 really it's 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 multiple multiple levels it's like as she says you know it's like you know all you all your five senses are kind of intertwined. Um, and um, but their your, their full intentions are good. There's no there's no bad intent. They're they're genuine. They're 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 trying to help humans. And it's not just the it's not just the gray race. It's you know the grays are working with other races as well, like the the tall whites, um, like the Nordic type of you know um, more humanoid um, um, race. And that's the same race that you know, that Chris Bledsoe, I think I've told you about. Uh, that's the race that he's dealt with the most is the is the tall whites. Okay. Uh, well, what what can you tell us? What is the difference? Like when you say the grays, and now the tall whites. So maybe what 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 is your description of them? Like what what what's the difference between the grays and the tall whites? Well, the tall whites are um, Chris says are like six or seven feet. They're they're more Nordic. Looking, he says they're the same races like Poseidon and Zeus, um, and they have you know, a lot of them have like blonde hair. Um, but he, he was not really able to really describe too much of their you know facial you know their facial features. Um, and then the the grays, uh, there's different different you know types of grays, and there you know there's older grays and there's um, you know shorter grays, um, younger grays. Um, what they what, how did she describe some of them? Um, ones that are almost look like uh, like praying mantises. Okay. So there's you know different different types of grays that that she's worked with, and again when she's been on board these craft, you know it's the grays and and the and the you know the tall whites, all these different races that work work together in in in, in groups and stuff like that. So it's not just one race. <coughs> so they races. so they've got a couple of races themselves. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I I know that. Well, what she said is like she was asked a question if she's ever worked with reptilians, but she's never worked with any reptil- reptilians herself. Yeah, and so this has been going on a long time. She said it's been going on, you know, all, all her life, um, as far back as eight years old that she remembers. Um, could it could be even further than that? Because yeah. she was regressed to the point where she, before she was born, and she was just a you know an entity of light, uh, swimming in a vast sea of consciousness. You know, they they took her back to that you know back back that far, um, and that's when she gets that's kind of gets more into her well, we're talking about her book and regarding you know the whole book's getting to the end about the soul and the dual soul. And, uh, it's 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 kind of hard and complicated to explain that, but um, right, it's it's quite it's quite interesting. So, so how has this changed you? Um, uh, I mean, there's probably a lot of ways, but um, so did you come from uh, any sort of religion or religious sort of beliefs, and then has this changed it, or has this sort of enhanced well, it? It's um, it's kind of confused it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I you know I'm a I'm a Catholic, and you know I uh, I'm, a, I'm a quite quite a strong Catholic. Um, in fact, uh, you know, I, there was a period of time where I turned away from the church for ten years, and uh, it was the darkest period of the period of my life. And then when I came back, um, you know, and, and accepted Jesus back in my life again, you know, I had lost I had lost all my musical abilities, you know, through that period of time, you know, with um, having children and having twins, and then you know, I just didn't have time for music at all and lost complete, you know, my music ability. And then when I asked Jesus to come back in my heart, he gave it all back to me, and then, and then I haven't stopped writing music, you know. So, I, you know, I had a complete turnaround. Mm. Um, How but, does that fit in with this, bud? Well, um, I'm, kinda, I'm really kind of confused. I mean, because, um, you, know, um, you know, Chris Bledsoe, for, you know, I've, I've spoken with him many times, probably on the phone, and for people to understand who Chris Bledsoe is, um, you will be knowing about him very soon because they're making a movie um, his, uh, based on his experiences. Uh, Warner Brothers is releasing a movie next year, you know, a big Hollywood film based on his experiences. Um, you know, same like that movie that came out uh, in the 1990s, you know, uh, Fire in the Sky, the Travis Walton story. Um, this one's even bigger than that. 
and um, and it, it, things have not stopped happening with 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 Chris. Uh, the, you know, more and more amazing things have happened, and he's told me these things in private. These these amazing things, um, and you know, um, and the things that are happening uh, are re- really tied together with religion as well. Um, you know, the Vatican is uh, you know. You know, is definitely in contact with him and higher, you know, higher sources of the U.S. government as well. Know, you know, very well about, you know, what's going on with him. So, um, you know, and what he's confirmed is that, you know, um, the Bible is very real. You know, um, you know, God is very real. Everything in the Bible is real, but um, trying to tie it together with the extraterrestrial, you know, with the extraterrestrials, is what is is key. Because um, there, you know, there is it's it they're they're tied together, and when I say that, um, you know, but I mean because um, he has uh, he's talked about and he's met with um, what they call the the shining lady, who is this very graceful, beautiful looking woman who in in you know white and, and gray, um, uh, she's actually appeared to Sammy Hagar. Um, you know, the singer Sammy Hagar, the, the musician, appeared to him in his bedroom and he wrote a song about her. But um, Chris has met with her on a couple of occasions because uh, a message was given to Chris to spread to the world and he was very uncomfortable with it and very upset about it and didn't want to share it with And so you know, one time they, you know, they took him on board the craft and they flew him across space and took him to a planet, and he was, you know, landed in this valley, and here's this woman, you know, in, in majestic, you know, on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a throne, talking to him, saying that, you know, this is a, a burden that you must carry. This is your message. You need to spread this. And I've asked him, well, who is the Shining Lady? And he says, Kevin, she has many names. Mary? Isis? <laughs> she says she is the mother I'm like, my God, he's met with the Virgin Mary. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. That's so. pretty. I mean, so, so this is, it's kind of, so it's obviously um, changed your situation, but not, you're still kind of going through it. So, you, yeah, I'm still going through it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm still in a, in a, in a matter of real confusion, you know. Um, like, cause I don't know. Like, it's like, you know, even even talking to Chris, it's like he says, the more he knows, the more he doesn't know. He feels like he knows nothing, and he's yet he's knows more than anybody. You know, it's like, wow, it's it's just, and that's why disclosure is going to take such a long time because there's it's you know there's so much, there's so many levels to it, so many levels. And so, how do you think the government ties in? Do you think like uh, the government knows um, a lot of this or not? They know a lot more than 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 we, you know, think they know. They they know they know a lot, um, and you know, talking to you know, I've I've you know been you know, because of you know being in contact with with Brian Cameron, he's introduced me to many people, and I've had a chance to speak with a lot of them, um, including you know uh, Michael Lee Hill, who uh, is. He um, he's actually uh, the son of of, um, of oh, Eric Clapton, a biological son of Eric Clapton. But he was had he had many UFO experiences and seeing you know UFOs over Lake Erie, and he be, you know, became you know he was on UFO hunters many times because of his experiences. But then through UFO hunters, they they did some blood tests on him, and they found that um, his blood type there was an anomaly with his blood that was very unusual. And uh, what they found out was that he is actually an alien hybrid, and he's he, he is actually a descendant of the Anunnaki. So, and then once this came out, um, he was approached by um, I believe it's Lear, uh, the people who make the jets and stuff like that, and they knew all about this and um, that they have many people in this program because they know about these alien hybrids, and they put them into this special program. So they know a lot. <laughs> They know a lot, you know. The government knows a lot more than what they're what they're telling people, uh, and what the government, you know, and what you know the different things that they experiment with, um, and and what's going on. Because you know, like you know, talking with Misha Johnson, you know, she talks about MK Ultra and and all these you know black ops and stuff like that and mind control and um, 
you know, people being, you know, abducted by black ops because of their involvement with UFOs and stuff like that. And, uh, there's many different levels to, you know, what the government knows and what it's trying to do or, you know, um, I'm, you know, as I said, like, I'm still trying to put the pieces together because there's just so much, yeah. so much to understand. Oh, yeah, yeah. And there's a, it's hard to look at a big picture when you're within it, you know? Yeah. Um, so do you think that they make a lot of decisions based on what the aliens tell them? Or do, or do you think they let the governments do what they want, pretty much? The government itself? Yeah. Do you, so, like, for instance, the U.S. government, that's kind of a big one in, in Russia, and they have a lot of, you know, uh, influence in the world. Mm-hmm. So do you think that they're, um, you know, like, all the things going on, like you brought up ISIS, and, and there's also, there's, um, you know, all the stuff, the shootings in the U.S. and all the fighting over. Do you think that they just don't care, let the humans, let them do whatever they do, and... Uh, We'll sort it out later, or do you think that they sort of influence it somehow? Um, well, actually, when I was last talking to Chris, he said that you know the information that was shared with him that you know he didn't really want to talk about is directly related to what exactly is going on in the Middle East right now. So he said like, these are the predictions of the things that they were telling telling him that were going to happen, and I think from what I understand is that if things do get very bad, that they would actually intervene at some level. Hmm. Um, yeah, because it's it doesn't seem to be getting much better. I mean, I think the um, Britain just got involved in it yesterday, and 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 it seems it seems like more and more people are getting involved, more countries, and it's it's not seeming to get um, you know anything resolved. Uh-huh. So that's just uh, it's just curious whether or not they 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 care and i i guess it's really tough to tell from from your your vantage point well they do care cuz they've been they you know they've been warning about it for several years and as chris has said this is now it's starting to happen of what he was warned about yeah and you know um so we're just, we're just kind of watching to see what's going to happen you know are they going to turn to intervene well they, they might depending on how bad things get i don't know yeah it's pretty interesting um, so now yeah, you, you've talked to Chris Bledsoe quite a bit then, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's yeah. been a big influence. Have you talked to any of the other, like, did you ever get to talk to Travis Walton? or? No, myself, but I know that uh, Chris and Travis Walton are good friends. And, you know, I saw a picture, they were at a conference together um, with, uh, you know, I saw a picture with him, Travis, and Grant Cameron all standing together. It was a selfie that they took, and it was on Facebook on Chris's page. So I thought that was pretty cool. I've never actually spoken to Travis Walton myself. No, I mean I've, I've talked to uh, you know Chris on several occasions, and he's told me some things that were just crazy, just amazing, like like amazing. Um, you know, like you know, people talk about you know wanting to have the smoking gun of proof. <clears throat> well, you know, and there's a movie called An Interview with the Vampire that, you know, it came out many years ago. Well, he's got Interview with the Alien. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's got he's got a, a two hour video. Um basically here how his is this is how it went down. Um there's a tree on his property. Uh it's it's a very special tree. It's called the burning tree because it burned for the inside out. And it's gonna be in the movie. Um but what happened was that um, there was many cameras that were set up on the property, and uh, Grant was with, uh, or sorry, Chris was with a bunch of people, and um, some people high up, you know, in, in um, you know, like um, in the government. And a portal actually opened up on this property, and a being stepped out of it, and they all went into the portal together, and they interviewed this this being um, for about two hours. They have it on video and audio. It's all recorded. The real this, this is the real thing. So is is he going to bring that out? Is he going to expose it or? I don't know. I mean, he has the video. The government has the video. Um, I don't know what's going on with it. I'm not sure what's going on, but it's kind of kept you know locked up right now. But they asked you know I think he said like over 250 questions. They asked they were interviewing. And uh, he was reading some of the, you know, some of the, the script off his computer to me, and you know, the, some of the conversation. And, and uh, 
you know, one of the first things they were asked was, you know, where, where would you like to go? Would you like to go to heaven or would you like to go to the dark side of the moon? And so they uh, decided to go to the dark side of the moon and, and they took them to the other side of the moon, you know, to, uh, to talk. Um, you know, they went into this portal and then they were basically, um, you know, beamed up to this craft that was on, you know, off to the side of the moon. And uh, funny thing is, is that the craft actually had a name. I think like, I think the name was like Thomas or something like that. Like it was like alive, like it had its own entity, like it was like a, a entity of its own. Um, but uh, you know, they interviewed this this you know this being, and once again, like a, a tall white type of uh, you know person uh, interviewed him for t for uh, two hours. Mm -hmm. So this video exists. So, with with your own personal experience, over time, has it changed? Like now that uh, do you process it differently? Do you get? How do you look at what happened to you now, as compared to let's say six months ago? Is it different? There's things, there's pieces that are coming together, um, because I'm slowly putting things together and understanding things uh, at a different level, and things will be made aware to me that I didn't quite put together before, like these like pieces of a puzzle. And, um, you know, the biggest thing with, with these extraterrestrials in our, in our, our evolution as a species is our, is our, is our, is reaching our new, a new stage of, 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 you know, uh, the same level that they're at, which is a tele telepathic level. Um, and everything is consciousness. It's all about consciousness. Um, you know, ESP is all part of it. Um, the whole thing is is all consciousness. They you know they control their ships through consciousness. You know when you when you fly a ship, you're you know you there's no steering wheel. You're hooked up to it with your with your mind, and you you fly it that way. Um, um, but these beings, you know, as I said, like you know when they went to, when Susan working with the Greys, they'll they'll give you know they'll, they'll download massive amounts of information into you, and you're processing it, and she, you know some of it you'll get caught you'll get you know conscious um but some of it you know you you know if you can't absorb all of it it'll end up going to your unconscious and then she put it um i can't really get off track here but um you know if they're if they're short for time <laughs> with you because they have to get you back home and they have more people that they're bringing on board they'll they'll kind of like bombard you with the same information you know a few times so like then you'll you know, you know so that less is falling out falling out the bottom so they're, they'll like you know, over overload you, so they you know get the information to you that you need. But you know, like basically going back to me, um, what I'm starting to find is um, it is all related to you know to consciousness and ESP and and all that, because um, I do have ESP, but I don't have control of it. Um, um, I really became really aware of my ESP abilities, and it was actually when I was talking to Heather Wade, who's uh, Art Bell's producer, and she asked me these questions, and they just like a eureka moment where she was asking me the ESP and when I first noticed it, and I realized it was when I was writing my first album for Pyramids on Mars, and that's when you know when when I really became aware of my own ESP abilities because through my music I'm reaching higher states of consciousness, and I think at that point I was also tapping into the this universal consciousness. And that's when ESP was really going off the roof for me. And you know, I you know, I, I call somebody and they say, "Oh, we we're just talking about you," or I'd be thinking about somebody who's far away, and then I would call, and or they would all of a sudden call me, and it was like it was like happening so much. It was like this is like this is getting ridiculous. I can't ignore this anymore. But then the largest, my the biggest ESP experience for me was actually last year. Um, it was Robin Williams' death. And he died August 11th, uh, which is a Monday, uh, 2014. But it was on the Sunday before that I had this huge disturbance in the Force. It was like an Obi-Wan thing from Star Wars. It was exactly the same. And what happened was that I was doing dishes. It was 11.30 uh, in the morning. And all of a sudden, I was overcome with this, almost like a wave hit me, of extreme grief and sadness and it was Robin Williams' face that I saw, and I saw his face very vividly. It was like the movie, the end of the movie Bicentennial Man. Um, did you ever see that movie? No, I don't think so. It's a beautiful movie. It's, it's very long, but he basically plays an android um, that you know becomes very human and has human you know 
human, you know, emotions and qualities, but he gets tired of living because he keeps out living his, um, you know, his loved ones. And after 250 years, he makes the decision that he wants to, you know, to die. And so the last, you know, they, they finally found a way of being able to, you know, to let him die. And the last part you see in the movie, he's lying on his bed with that sad smile that you often see, you know, you know that you often see with him, like, like he's got a smile, but he's got sad eyes. And he's, it's, it's just panning away as he's, as he, as he's dying. And that's the image that I saw in my mind very, very vividly. I saw it and felt it was overcome with this grief, like you're seeing him dying and think, oh, I gotta really watch this movie right now. I'm really sad. Uh, I'm just so overwhelmed, so, you know, it was, it was overwhelming, this, the emotion that I was feeling. And then it was like, you know, a little bit more than 24 hours later, it was Monday night where uh, my, my, my wife turned to me and said, oh, did you hear that Robin Williams died today? I'm like, oh my goodness, that's really sad. Oh my God, I saw him dying yesterday. <laughs> it was like this, re- this eureka moment. Oh my God. This is, I, I turned her and said, this is, this is insane. I said, this is this is this is not coincidence. I had a, a huge ESP moment. Now here's the thing, Alan. That was August 11th. Guess when my sighting was? When my UFO flew over my house? Exactly ten days after. Wow. So, so how do, how does that how is it related? Do you think? Is there um, more specifically? I think that they're trying to get me to wake up to uh, to understand because um, you know I, my sighting happened last year and it wasn't until almost a year later it was this year when um, they made the decision that it was time for me to wake up and understand what why why they contacted me or that they you know I find out that they actually contacted me directly it was um, when you know the alien cosmic exhibition convention was going on in Brantford and I went online to see who was presenting and then and all of a sudden when I saw Grant Cameron's presentation on you know UFOs musicians and the connection and why you, you, aliens are contacting musicians I was just like shocked it was just like oh my god this is about me the, you know this is this is all about what, what's happening with me because I have been writing music for pyramids on Mars you know, for, since 2011, and my intention was to use my music to raise consciousness of the UFO phenomenon and, and help people understand that, you know, that it's real and that they're here. Well, looks like they had the same intentions with me, and now they want me to waken up and understand that it's true. They, you know, they want me, they want me to do what I'm, is and I'm doing. Because when I went to the Alien Cosmic Exhibition, it was there that I found out um, you know, MUFON, who took my report, um, I, I bumped into them down there. And they're like, oh, my God, I'm so glad you're here. We're doing a presentation on you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, what? Because, yeah, your sighting ten- turned out to be one of the most authentic uh, cases that we've worked on. This is really, it's really exciting. I'm like, well, that's amazing. I'm, you know, that's awesome. I just, you know, how come I'm, I haven't heard about this until now? <laughs> And so then I talked to him, and I was like, hey, well, how many other people reported it? You know, it must have been like, you know, it must have been a lot of people, because it was 10.30 at night, you know, it, this this craft, this, you know, disc-shaped object came, um, you know, very slowly across my backyard. It was only maybe like, you know, 1,500 feet away, and maybe 12 feet off the ground. It was covered in plasma. It looked like it was on fire, moving at the speed of a helicopter across the mountain. You know, everybody should have saw it. There, you know, people are walking their dogs and driving their cars. There should have been many reportings, hundreds of reportings. And they said, sorry, nobody else reported it. And then when I, you know, I was like shocked and I just couldn't believe what they were telling me. And then I find out, you know, it was actually confirmed, you know, that, you know, I was on Rob McConnell's show on the Monday afterwards and he did research before I went on because they use different sites to look for whatever anomalies, you know, um, and they found that there was absolutely no evidence at all of any anomalies the night of August 21st, 2014, you know, when when I had my sighting in Hamilton. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And so as far as, you know, as far as the records go, yeah, I was the only one who saw this thing. It doesn't make any sense. But, you know, it was, it was, it was enough affirmation that you know, I was contacted by Rob McConnell's producer the next day, 
and they told me never to contact them again. They didn't believe my story. Hmm. So, <laughs> that's yeah. kind of that's bizarre because, uh, uh, what? Yeah, that's that's a bizarre way of of um, of handling it. Of handling it because, you know, I said, yeah, I just don't understand that. But he's yeah, that doesn't make sense. Why? Why would he do that? I don't know. But you know, I was I was kind of angry at first, thinking, "How can how can you you know reject me like this?" But then I started thinking, you know what, this is actually a good thing because they did the research for me. They they checked checked the whole thing out and found out that you know verified that what you know Mufon was saying was that I was the only one who saw this thing. And so and here's where they you know where, where all the coincidences add up. Here's Grant Cameron at the presentation who knows what's going on. And he was able to explain the whole thing. He's saying, you know, it's a consciousness thing, and um, you know, the fact that I was the only one who saw it. This happens all the time. He says, you know, the same thing happened to John Lennon. Same thing happened to many people that he's spoken to who are driving down the highway, being chased by a UFO on a busy freeway. And then when they're asked, okay, how many other cars were there that you passed? He says, actually, the highway was completely empty. And it's like it's like, which doesn't make any sense because it's normally a busy highway. And as Grant says, you know, these beings somehow have an ability to be able to isolate who it is they want to contact or, or you know, uh, interact with and shut everybody else around them down. So, uh, however they did it, you know, this craft flew by my house, you know, it only traveled exactly the distance of my backyard and made its way down south. And it appeared in such a way that there's, it took me six months to try and understand what it was I was looking at. Because I had never seen an object that was covered in plasma. And the thing that really captured my attention about this object was that it was two-dimensional. Two-dimensional. Hmm. It was like looking at a at a solar eclipse, except the solar eclipse was orange and red tie-dye. It was like looking at a hole in the sky. That's what this thing looked like. It's like, hmm. I've never seen anything that's two-dimensional before. So so for someone that doesn't know, who who would, if someone sees something like this, or has an experience, who is it that they go to, or who do you report to? I reported it to two entities, uh, MUFON, which is the Mutual UFO Network. They do all, you know, they research, you know, most, most majority of, of UFO sightings. Um, they have, you know, they have a lot of, um, you know, researchers all over different places. So um, I found out that, you know, there's guys in Brantford um, who were MUFON um researchers and so they end up taking the case uh, i also called the um ufo reporting site in washington dc but nothing ever became of that i never you know they never got back to me um i tried phoning the hamilton airport to uh to ask them if there was any you know if they had seen any anomalies in that but they never called me back either they thought it was you know nuts <laughs> yeah or they, they might get a, a lot of calls too right it's hard to say yeah, yeah i mean it, it's hard to say what their point is there. Yeah. Um, so you think that they have the ability to close off people uh, from seeing them? Yes. Yes. Is, um, so, so do you think that's just it's just done through the mind somehow, or? I don't know, but I know that I've spoken to many other people who have had similar experiences where. You know, they've seen craft and they're amongst a lot of people and they're trying to get people's attention and people just don't, don't see it. It's like only certain people see it. Um, you know, I was speaking to uh, Mike Vera from, uh, uh Midnight in the, or his program, um, uh, Midnight in the, in the Midlands and he saw a, a, um, st- a stadium sized craft that was covered in plasma, you know, in the air. Um, with his wife, and there were other people around them, and, they didn't, and other people didn't see it, but, you know, they did. Uh, I was also speaking with uh, a, another lady um, I met at the at the ACE as well. Her name's uh, Leslie, and she's a, a hypnotherapist, and she was on the 427 in Toronto, and she happened to see a, a massive craft in the sky that wasn't too far away, and other cars are just driving by like normal. It's just like... And here's this, you know, here's this thing in the sky, you know. It's just, you know, it's very strange, you know. How people can, you know, other people don't don't see what other people see. 
Hmm. That's unusual. Uh, I, I mean, it's just how how they can how they can mm-hmm. manipulate like that. So, uh, well, it's it's weird weird to think about. What what have you done differently in your life since then? So I've what, spent yeah. Well, I've um, I spent a lot of time, um, you know, in discussion with uh, with uh, you know these many different people that I've been able to get in t- contact with, like, you know, talking to Chris Bledsoe, uh, talking with Michael Lee Hill, talking with Misha Johnson, uh, talking with Grant Cameron. And I, and I, I go on a lot of, uh, radio talk shows now, UFO radio talk shows to talk about my experiences and, uh, you know, how I'm not the only musician who has been, um, contacted, uh, that there are many musicians and, and that are being contacted uh, by extraterrestrials and, uh, you know, we're, we're, you know, there's a reason for it. Um, you know, we've hypothesized that, you know, I, th- I believe that, you know, um, music is, is a universal language and it has a way of being able to convey emotion and, uh, and, um, people are more receptive to ideas through music. And that's why extraterrestrials, you know, car contact with a lot of musicians is because they're able to, Help raise awareness through the you know through the medium of music, and so they you know hire a lot of these you know super soldiers, so to speak, musicians to uh, be you know to uh, to help raise raise awareness. So um, I feel it's my you know my 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 duty. You know they've you know, they've knocked on my door saying this is this is what you're supposed to do. So this is what I am doing, and I'm trying to get pyramids on Mars. You know. I, more and more, you know, popular, so that I, I can get to the point where I can do music pro- as a profession, and um, continue to raise consciousness through my music and and through uh, the message that I'm trying to share. That's so, very important. so that's kind of your goal, then. That's the, that's where you see this heading for yourself. That's where you see yourself going. That's where I'm going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, so now you said you released something new in September. Yes. And yes. How's the how's the response been? It's been it's been fantastic. Um, you know, I've got, you know, I get probably four thousand new Twitter followers a month. Um, I have I've had over twenty <clears throat> magazine reviews, and um, uh, the majority of them are very very positive. Um, you know, people really like what what, what it is that I'm doing, and uh, a lot of people find my music takes them on a journey. Because my my music is instrumental, so um, um, I'm kind of like the, the Satriani, uh, Joe Satriani. That's my style of music. Uh, but my music's really, uh, it's very melodic, and um, people find that you know my music takes them on takes them on a on a, on a, on a journey. And there's a lot of emotion in my music. Um, you know, you know I, I come from more of a, of a of a metal background, but my music is not dark. It's not from a dark place. It's from a, a uplifting, euphoric state that I like try and play from. So, so it's, it's pretty influenced from your experience then? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I use a lot of analog keyboards in my music, uh, like Moogs and, and uh, Oberheims, so they have a very warm uh, synthes- synthesis to them. It sounds like something you'd hear if you landed on Mars and were looking around. So there's a real space space <laughs> kind of feel to a lot of my music. <laughs> yeah. did, now, did, did you watch the movie The Martian? No, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, okay. No, I haven't either. I but I was just, you know, it was apparently a pretty popular movie, so I thought, mm-hmm. you know, I'd run it by you and see if you knew. Um, it's, what? So, what's your impression of Mars, and what's your impression of of where the aliens come from? Like, do you have an idea? Well, um, Mars itself. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things being leaked on Mars now, things that just don't seem to be in place there. I've, I've been looking at stuff from Mars for years, and, I, I, and um, you know, there's there's all kinds of artifacts on Mars. Mars is just littered with artifacts. And I honestly think that there was a civilization on Mars at some point, but um, they may have blown themselves up or something happened, something catastrophic happened to their civilization. Uh, but you know, there's, you know, there are ruins on Mars, um, lots of ruins and just, you know, people are, you know, showing evidence there could possibly be, uh, you know, life on Mars as well. 
uh, creatures on Mars. Um, um, yeah, yeah, there's I, been a lot about the um, water and different things that they're they're finding. Do you think they know more about Mars than 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 they let on? Oh yeah, like they're, you know what? I think that really, honestly, um, you know, it's NASA is slowly leaking things out um, purposely to help you know to 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 get people to a new level of, of of acceptance and understanding but you know i you know there's a lot of things that you know that, that end up getting you know filmed through the you know the rover curiosity that are very you know questionable in regards to you know what is actually up there and um you know they know they know what's up there you know they they've they've said you know they've they've filmed the entire planet from from space so you know, there's a lot of ruins up there that they're not talking about, um, and they. You know, I've seen I've seen so much, so many so many you know, things that are that are up there, that no that um, shouldn't be up there, but they are up there. Uh, any any influences for you, like who uh, other than what you've mentioned, like what have you seen any of the stuff out by Nick Redfern or? No, no, I haven't. Okay. Who's he? Um, he does a lot of UFO stuff as well, and I know he. I saw a documentary with him on the uh, um, Mars and some of the um, weird things caught on film. You know, trying to describe mm. what they are and stuff. So okay, that's why uh, he's written several books too. That's all. Mm. Um, oh, he was on the show talking about it, so that's why. I, um, uh, who do you have for influences right now? Richard Hoagland. I read a lot of, you know, watch, you know, watch a lot of stuff that Richard Hoagland is, is, is talking about. Uh, you know, he talks, you know, shows a lot of anomalies on the moon, uh, a lot of things about, about Mars, um, about, about, um, uh, Saturn and, um, and, uh, particularly, particularly one of the last things I was watching was, uh, these probes that are just hitting the, uh, the asteroid belt outside of Mars. Yeah, one of the last videos I saw was he was uh, showing some images of uh, it's a it's a, a satellite that was sent out to uh, check out some of these comets that are in the asteroid belt, and uh, one of these ones that they're coming up towards um, is completely covered with artificial you know anomalies. It's 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 breathtaking. It's it's crazy, and NASA hasn't been hasn't been uh, editing it. They've been allowing these pictures coming out, showing, you know, signs of uh, artificial structures on these comets. So what's going on? Yeah. Why? You know, what is what is going on here? So. Hmm. You have to you have to wonder what the big picture is, eh? Uh, yeah. With all. Yeah. This. Um, yeah. Well, what you know? Why? Why are they choosing these comets? Well, you know, what was the exact reason? Why they know? Why do they even know that there's going to be something, something odd about it? You know, just to send out these probes years ago and are finally reaching, you know, finally reaching these destinations to check these things out. Is there a message that you are trying to send people in your music? Yeah. Um, it's more it's more from an emotional uh point um my you know one of my greatest influences is Jimi hendrix and and david gilmour and my music i i i write all my music coming from a uh, very high emotional state uh all my music is written it's almost like i don't even feel like i'm writing my own music it's uh it's almost like it's channeled and that's another thing that you know i've started to discover you know, through Grant Cameron's work, is that a lot of musicians have music that seems seems to come from somewhere else, and I try and write all my music coming from a different consciousness. Uh, you know, it's like it's kind of like the creative flow that artists get when they when they tap into something, and all of a sudden, all these ideas just fly to them, and it almost feels like they're you know, they don't they don't know where the ideas are coming from. It's like that creative conscious flow. And I think it's tapping into a higher, a higher state of being. And you know, through his research, that's what he seems to be, you know, pointing towards. Is that's what, what that's what's going on. 
um, when people are able to shut down their analytical you know, left brain and let their creative right brain do what it normally does and naturally does, it is the part of the brain that's hooked up with oneness with spirituality and and the universe, and it and it, it's like it you know we get we get reconnected to our higher conscious self. And so my music, you know, I'm trying to write from that from that from that higher higher state of mind, um, and 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 capture it like in a bottle, and that then that, that's that's you know that's what I'm writing with my music, and I'm hoping to you know to to reach other people as well to, you know, to feel, you know, to read that, you know, feel that, you know, the same state that, that I've felt, you know, that I'm trying to capture when, you know, what I've listened to, but I'm inspired by, you know, musicians like David Gilmore and Jimi Hendrix uh, and capture that same kind of energy. Hmm. So you, it, now do you, do you think subconsciously they're, they're feeding you things when you're creating the music? They have, they have actually directly, um, uh, I discovered that uh, my first song on my first on, on on my latest CD, Echo Cosmic, the first song is called Dream Division, and I actually didn't write that song. That's a song I heard in my dreams. Um, and it's actually going to be in Grant's uh, Grant's book that he's writing. It will called uh, Music Inspirations. And what happened was that I had this dream where I'm seeing uh, some guy interviewing the guitar player, Joe Satriani, and he's sitting at a recording console and being asked questions like, you know, he said, I hear you're working on a new album. He says, yeah, we got some, you know, some, um, you know, some uh, new bed tracks that we've just recorded. And he says, well, can you play us anything? He says, oh, yeah, we got this song here. And he starts playing this song. And uh, he starts off with the guitar, and the bass joins in, and then he's doing something different to the guitar, and then when the drums kick in, it's doing something completely different, but it all works together like a clock. And I thought, God, that sounds really cool. I wish I could write something like this. And then I realized, wait a second, he didn't write this song. <laughs> he didn't write the song. I so wake myself up and I record, you know, I, I write down all the tracks from the song I heard in my dream. And so, you know, what you hear on on my on the album is exactly what I heard in my dream. I didn't write it. It was, just, you know, it was it's it's the same thing like if you walked up and went into your car, turn on the radio and you're hearing a song, you know, and somebody turns to you and says, "That song doesn't exist." You know, here it's yours. It's basically how it happened. Does that sort of scare you a little? I think it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Like hearing this music in my dream, that you know, I didn't. It, there's no. I wasn't in a dream writing, in, writing music in a dream. I was in a dream, just you know, lies, lazing away, like watching a movie. It was completely passive. Completely passive. I didn't. I didn't. There's no effort at all. It was just listening to a dream, listening to a song, like turning on the radio. Wow. So like, I kind of wonder, like, where did that come from? Yeah. Tapping well, into a higher self. Yeah. I mean, I, that is pretty uh, pretty amazing. That's pretty interesting. I just I just wonder how it makes you feel, as in, like, wow. Um, yeah, it is wow. And I'm, I'm hoping for more of it to happen. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I guess as it comes, it'll happen as it's supposed to, right? Yeah, yeah. Like what I found out is that you know it's it's I'm not the only one who's had this. It, this happens with many musicians. Several of the Beatles' uh, biggest hits were were done that way. Like you know the song "Let It Be" was a song that John or that uh, Paul McCartney heard in a dream. He heard all the chord progression and all that, and uh, wrote the song. Um, songs that John Lennon has written as well. You know he gets stuff from dreams all the time, to the point where like you know he. You know, he works very hard to channel this stuff, and he has a you know a point of paper next to his bed, and uh, you know if he you know hears something in his dream, he'll wake up and he'll write it. And sometimes it's just like you know gibberish; it sounds like a different language, um, but he'll write it down. Um, and a lot of stuff that he write has written has all come from from dreams. Um, so it happens a lot. Well, it's pretty amazing um, how it goes, and and. Well, there you go. And so what's your plans for the new year? Oh, for the new year? Well, actually, I am currently working on um, guitar instructional videos. <laughs> oh. I'm going to be releasing guitar instructional videos very soon on, uh, on my website and on YouTube. So that's, what, that's currently what I'm working on. So oh, you know, that's pretty. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, so how do people get a hold of you? What is your website and... Uh, YouTube and everything else. What's your contact info? 
easily. Just go to www.pyramidsonmars.com. That's www.pyramidsonmars.com. And you can listen to my music right off the website. Um, all my uh, interviews are on there. Lots of radio um, shows, you know, tape, pre taped radio shows. You can listen to it all there. The uh, There's music videos on there. There's also uh, the, the Pyramids on Mars store as well. Um, there's cool stuff on there, like, you know, um, t shirts, posters. You know, my CDs are, you know, you can buy my CDs. Um, or if you want to buy, you know, through Amazon or iTunes, you can buy it digitally as well. There's all kinds of cool stuff. It's actually really a really uh, entertaining website. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, we'll forward it. Well, it's always been a pleasure to talk to you. It's always interesting. And uh, we wish you the uh, best as it goes. Awesome. Thank well, thanks. Well, thanks once again, Alan. And you know, there, you know, there's a lot more that's going on. And uh, the other thing I was going to say is, uh, you know, synchronicity is also very important because uh, I'm starting to find that there's a lot of things that are synchronizing, uh, and the universe is trying to tell you something. So if you think something that's kind of odd that kind of sync that syncs up in your life, you need to really pay attention to it because the universe is trying to tell you something. And um, there's a lot of things that have happened with me as well, you know, where I've had to pay attention to the synchronicities of what's going on and listen to what I'm supposed to be doing next. I think that's very good advice, very important. You've been listening to the House of Mystery radio show. To find out more about our guests, hosts, or shows, go to www.houseofmystery.com. Show is over for now. Was it as good for you as it was for me? Yeah. Good night. This has been a production of Something Weird Media. I'll be back.